yeah um today i'm back again with another video where i will you know focus on giving you guys those ah moments you know what i mean you know when you're listening to a teacher explaining or a tutor or whoever ex who, who tries to simplify something for you for you and all you all you can get you know from the whole lesson is ah you know we are after those kind of moments so let's hope after this video you're gonna get that ah you know yeah because we are here to get the concept that's why us as a team as a family as a crew as a clan we call ourselves the concept getters you know so anyway concept getters let's get on with it i'm gonna explain the theorem that states that a line drawn from center is perpendicular to chord and bisects the chord that is the first theorem in grade 11 and remember in grade 12 you also prove this theorem in grade 11 you have four theorems of which the proofs are examinable and in grade 12, you have two. And in total, when you write your grade 12 final exam, you have six proofs that you have to know. So this is the first one of them, right? We're going to start with the construction, right? Remember, the first thing is to construct. So this is where we are right now. The first thing is to, is to construct, you know, do you see this, this thing that I'm circling here? Yeah, construct. This is the first thing we're going to start with. We're going to construct, okay? We're gonna construct the radii, uh, the radii. Huh, I've learned, I've learned. Hey, English, the radii OA and OC, right? So let me construct the rad radii OA, radii OA. Let's see, OA. I'm gonna start on A here. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say. Radii O A O A O A. Do you see it? And I'm also gonna construct radii O C. Radii O C O C O C. You see, I constructed the radius O A, the radius O C. Both of them. Remember, plural radii, singular radius. Okay. So now, after constructing the radii O A and O C, I'm also gonna construct B one and B two. You see them. Here's our B1 here. Do you see the B1, the B1, the B1, the B1? And also the B2. Do you see the B2? Awesome. So now that I have that, I'm going to say in triangle O, A, B. You see this triangle? In that triangle, I'm going to say O, A is equal to equal to what in triangle o c b in that triangle i'm gonna say what i'm gonna say o a is equal to what o c because we know that o a is equal to o c because obviously the radii are always equal you get my point right then the reason will be what the reason will be radii makes sense that's the first thing then the second thing is i'm gonna say uh b2 in triangle o a b is equal to b1 right and they are all equal to 90 degree reason is it's given because as you can see i gave you the 90 degree there right then i'm gonna say again line o b is equal to line o b this line here this line here this line here is in this triangle and in this triangle those two lines are what are equal this line the line o b in this triangle equals to the line o b in this triangle do that make sense the reason is what the reason is the line is common so I'm going to say the reason is, I'm going to say the reason is, come on, makes sense. So what you guys didn't notice is I went straight to the following, okay? This, these are the things that I went straight to. I went straight to OA is equals to OC, this. If you haven't noticed, in this triangle, this OA we call it a hypotenuse. So I was looking for what we call the hypotenuse. 
and even this one is the hypotenuse where we're looking for the hypotenuse make sense that's the first thing and the second thing i went for if you haven't noticed is the b2 and the b1 of which both of them are equal to 90 degree when i went after them here the b2 equals to b1 which is which are 90 degree this one and this one i went for 90 degrees because we're dealing with these two triangles which are right angled triangles so remember i went for the hypotenuse i went for the right angle makes sense then i went for just a random side that i know is very obvious to be equal one side on one triangle the one side in this triangle and another side in this triangle i knew that they were very obvious to be equal makes sense so i was like oh this side ob because it belongs here and it also belongs here is common because it exists on both the triangles therefore obviously ob on this side ob on this side is equals to ob on this side makes sense so the fact that it's a common side it means it's a side on one, on one triangle and a side on another triangle and they are equal. So I went for just what we call a random side on both triangle. So it's side. So you can see the pattern here. There's an R, there's an S, and there's an H. Makes sense. So that's why now if I have, if I have a right angle and I have an hypotenuse and I have a side, automatically it gives you the properties of congruent triangles remember those properties right angle hypotenuse side gives you properties of what of congruent triangles so therefore it's this is basically conclusive to say to say what to say triangle o a b is congruent to triangle o c b so if i say if i just go straight to say therefore triangle o a b is congruent to triangle what it's congruent to triangle o c b and my reason is right angle hypotenuse side so now we know that if two triangles this triangle here and this triangles if they are congruent automatically all the corresponding sides are equal so we already concluded that this side is equal to this side because of the radii and we know this one is common therefore it's quite obvious now or to conclude that which means this side now is obviously equal to this side that is why we can conclude and say therefore side a b is equal to side b c and which is what we are proving look at the, at the top there you see rtp here here you see this rtp we are proving these guys and we got it so in summary you have to re this is the thinking okay just say after constructing, I'm aiming for R, right angle, and I'm aiming for hypotenuse, and I'm aiming for a normal side. The R is the angles B1 and B2. The hypotenuse are your radii that you constructed, right? And your S is your common side. Once you can mention these three, then you can conclude here and say, therefore, they are congruent, and then you go straight to writing the RTP. So this is the best way or the easiest way to say it. So every time when you see this, this proof just say i'm looking for my r i'm looking for my h and i'm looking for my s and then i can conclude that these two triangles are congruent and when i'm done with concluding concluding that the two triangles are congruent then i can say therefore whatever that is required to be proven is the case easy ne? ah come on guys come on you can't tell me that you didn't say ah